On September 5, 2024, Australia took a significant step toward enhancing its long-range strike capabilities by signing a 142 million Australian dollars, approximately 94.145 million US dollars, contract with Norway's Kongsberg Defence and Aerospace to procure Joint Strike Missiles, JSM, for the Royal Australian Air Force's F-35A Lightning II fleet. This acquisition, slated for delivery starting in 2025, reflects the Albanese government's accelerated push to bolster the Australian Defence Force's precision strike capacity, as outlined in the 2023 Defence Strategic Review and the 2024 National Defence Strategy. Valued at approximately 1 billion NOK in Norwegian terms, the deal not only strengthens Australia's military posture, but also deepens its strategic partnership with Norway, Japan and the United States, nations already integrating the JSM into their arsenals. Beyond the missile itself, this procurement is underpinned by a broader vision of sovereign capability, with an $850 million investment to establish a missile manufacturing facility in Newcastle, Australia, set to produce both JSMs and naval strike missiles. This dual-purpose initiative positions Australia as a key player in the global guided weapons ecosystem while fostering economic growth and job creation at home. The JSM procurement process was fast-tracked to meet Australia's urgent need for advanced standoff weapons, a priority driven by the evolving security dynamics of the Indo-Pacific region. Announced alongside Norway's Defence Minister Bjorn Arild Gram at the opening of Kongsberg's $25 million facility in Mawson Lakes, South Australia, on September 5, 2024, the contract complements a decade-long commitment of $16 to $21 billion under the Guided Weapons and Explosive Ordnance Enterprise. The Newcastle facility, one of only two such sites globally alongside its counterpart in Kongsberg, Norway, will begin construction later in 2024, creating over 500 jobs during its build phase and sustaining 100 permanent roles once operational by 2027. This investment not only ensures a reliable domestic supply of JSMs, but also aligns with the government's future Made in Australia agenda, as articulated by Deputy Prime Minister and Defence Minister Richard Miles. Eric Lee, President of Kongsberg Defence and Aerospace, emphasised that Australia's participation enhances the JSM programme with additional resources and expertise, potentially benefiting all partner nations. The Mawson Lakes facility, employing up to 150 workers and assembling NSM launchers with mostly Australian-made components, further cements this industrial collaboration, adding 20 permanent local jobs and reinforcing supply chain resilience. Designed specifically for the F-35A, the JSM is a 4-metre-long, 416-kilogram air-launched cruise missile capable of engaging both maritime and land targets at ranges exceeding 275 kilometres. Its low-altitude, sea-skimming flight profile delays detection by enemy defences, while advanced on-board and off-board mission planning allows for precise strikes under preset rules of engagement. Unlike other anti-ship missiles like the AGM-158C LRASM, the JSM fits within the F-35A's internal weapons bay, preserving the aircraft's stealth profile, a critical advantage in contested environments. Deliveries beginning in 2025 will see the missile integrated into Australia's 72-strong F-35A fleet, operated by No. 3 and No. 77 squadrons at Royal Australian Air Force Base Williamtown and No. 6 Squadron at Base Amberley. While the JSM's initial deployment will focus on the F-35A, its potential use on the F-A-18F Super Hornet remains an option, though not currently prioritised. This deployment strategy enhances the ADF's impactful projection, enabling it to deter adversaries by holding targets at risk from greater distances, a cornerstone of Australia's deterrence-by-denial approach in the Indo-Pacific. The missile's integration also leverages the F-35A's advanced sensor fusion and networking capabilities, ensuring seamless coordination with other ADF assets like the EA-18G Growler and MQ-28A Ghost Bat in multi-role operations. 
Though the JSM has yet to enter operational service with the Royal Australian Air Force, its naval counterpart, the NSM, demonstrated its potency during Exercise RIMPAC 2024, when HMAS Sydney sank the decommissioned USS Tarawa with an NSM on July 19, 2024. This success offers a glimpse of the JSM's potential once it becomes operational in late 2025 or early 2026, following training and integration exercises. The missile's role extends beyond immediate combat utility. It supports Australia's long-term air combat strategy, which began with its 2002 entry into the Joint Strike Fighter program as a Level 3 participant. After navigating delays, financial constraints and a 2007 interim purchase of 24 FA-18F Super Hornets, Australia confirmed its commitment to 72 F-35As by 2014, with the final aircraft delivered in December 2024. The JSM's integration into this fleet, currently at Block 3F configuration awaiting the Block 4 upgrade, ensures the F-35A remains a versatile platform for air defence, tactical bombing and now long-range strike missions through at least 2070. This adaptability is vital as Australia balances its ageing F-A-18F fleet, initially an interim measure, with the F-35A's cutting-edge capabilities, rejecting costlier alternatives like the F-35B for naval use due to prohibitive ship modification expenses. To assess the JSM strategic value, it's worth comparing it to similar systems fielded by Australia's regional competitors, particularly China and India, which dominate Indo-Pacific military modernization. China's PL-15 air-to-air missile, paired with the J-20 stealth fighter, boasts a range of 200-300 kilometers and advanced active electronically scanned array guidance, posing a significant threat to air superiority. However, the JSM's multi-role capability, targeting both ships and land, gives it an edge over the air-to-air -air focused PL-15, while its internal carriage maintains the F-35A's stealth advantage. India, meanwhile, deploys the BrahMos supersonic cruise missile, co-developed with Russia, on its Su-30 MKI fighters. With a range of 290 kilometers, extendable to 600 kilometers in newer variants, and speeds up to Mach 3, BrahMos outpaces the subsonic JSM around Mach 0.9. Yet, the JSM's stealth compatibility and lower radar cross-section offer superior survivability against modern air defenses, a trade-off favoring penetration over speed. Japan, an ally also adopting the JSM, enhances regional interoperability, contrasting with China and India's independent systems, which lack such coalition synergy. Indonesia, another regional player, relies on shorter range systems like the Russian KH-59 with a range of 200 kilometers, which lack the JSM's stealth and range, underscoring Australia's qualitative leap. Australia's JSM purchase thus represents a calculated enhancement of its deterrence posture, balancing range, stealth and versatility against regional competitors' strengths. While China's hypersonic DF-17, Mark 5 Plus, 1,800 to 2,500 km range, and India's planned BrahMos-2 hypersonic missile outstrip the JSM in speed and distance, Australia's integration of the JSM with the F-35A and potential future hypersonic upgrades ensures a competitive edge in stealth and precision. The domestic manufacturing capability further mitigates supply chain risks, a vulnerability exposed in global conflicts like Ukraine, where munitions shortages hampered operations. Economically, the Newcastle facility's $100 million boost and 600-plus jobs underscore a dual military-industrial strategy, rare among regional peers reliant on imports. The JSM's synergy with allied systems, particularly Japan's, strengthens collective defence under frameworks like AUKUS and the Quad, amplifying Australia's strategic weight. Moreover, the missile's production in Newcastle positions Australia as a potential exporter, enhancing its geopolitical influence. Overall, the JSM equips Australia to counterbalance the raw power of larger adversaries, securing its interests through 2040 and beyond with a blend of military prowess, industrial independence and alliance-driven resilience.